Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for March 4th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Today is National Day of Unplugging, National Employee Appreciation Day, World Day of Prayer, very important for us, Toy Soldier Day, Old Inauguration Day, and National Tartar Sauce Day, along with other things. Let's go ahead and get started. Show me your way, O Lord, that I may follow in your truth. Teach me to revere your name, and my whole heart will praise you. Our reading for today starts with Psalm 22. Listen for God's word to speak to you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning, O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. On you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let God rescue the one in whom God delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword. Life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise God. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify God. Stand in awe of God, all you offspring of Israel. For God did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. God did not hide God's face from me, but heard when I cried to God. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear God. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek God shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord and God rules over the nations. To God, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before God shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for God. Posterity will serve God. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that God has done it. Psalm 148 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God in all God's angels. Praise God, all God's host. 
Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever. God fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for God's people. Praise for all God's faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to God. Praise the Lord. Now from Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parents as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from the righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. All of you, according to your ways, says the Lord God, repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. From Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eudoia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, what is, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. And from John chapter 17, verses 9 through 19. Jesus continues to pray. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. 
All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Oops. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our readings for today, uh, some great stuff. First, uh, I want to note that our first psalm was Psalm 22, which may sound familiar. It begins with um, this phrase. Um, There we go. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, You might recognize that as something that Jesus says on the cross. He is quoting this psalm. There's quite a bit in this psalm. um, Things like, uh, I can count all of my bones, that uh, there there are people who are casting lots for my clothes, all of these sorts of things. The, The surrounding by enemies saying, you trusted in God, let God save you. Where is your God? All of these things sort of all fulfilled at the crucifixion, specifically in in Matthew's gospel, where he makes a very clear connection between Jesus and David, as well as Moses. Um, But yeah, Psalm 22, it's, it's it's a very lengthy kind of psalm. Then we have uh, from Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a prophet uh, who is called to the nation of Israel um, before the destruction. And it starts off with this idea, this proverb, right? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. That there's this phrase that basically saying that the parents do something and the, the repercussions come on the children. Boy, do we know that that is the truth. And yet, I think what's going on here is Ezekiel is almost saying that you're using that as an excuse that we won't actually experience the repercussions of our actions. It'll just be passed on to our children, so who cares? That kind of sounds familiar too, doesn't it? And he goes on with this idea of like, you think God is unfair? No, it's actually you who are being unfair. You're trying to pass these things along to others. You think that you're not going to experience the repercussions of your own actions. Well, guess what? God is fair, and you are going to to experience the repercussions of your actions. You shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Um... There is judgment, he says. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Ezekiel here before the destruction, is saying, you have a chance. You can turn things around. You can repent. You can change your ways. You can take yourself off of this path rather than just heading down this path and leaving it to future generations. You have a chance to do something. Again, the call comes back on us. This is not somebody else's mess to fix. This is not somebody else's problem to deal with. 
You see the problems that are going on. Do something about it. Repent. Turn from these things. Make changes. You are responsible. The repercussions of our own sins come upon us. Now, there may be repercussions for those who come after us. Absolutely. But shouldn't it be incumbent on us to make sure that we deal with the problems that we see rather than just passing them off to future generations? This has widespread application. We could talk about our ecology, the way that we use our resources on the earth and where that is going. We can talk about our economy and how that is geared towards continual inflation where those who have have more and those who don't have will never have. We could talk about the, the social problems that we have, that we carry on, we, we continue on, even though we know that there are problems with them, but we just keep them going because it doesn't affect us that much. All of these things, right? It, the same idea. You see the way things are going. Do something about it. Don't just let it go on to the, your children. Then Philippians continues um this is this is sort of near the end of philippians philippians 4 is the last chapter and so we have paul's kind of continued conversation so some interesting things so um he encourages them in joy right um rejoice in the lord always again i say because maybe you didn't catch it the first time i say rejoice in the lord right there's an urging of these two women who apparently are in a struggle, in a fight. He says, encourage them, right? Help them to reconcile with one another because that's where we should be as the people. Together, they can work for the gospel. We also have, he says very clearly, they have worked right alongside me for the gospel. Again, these are two women. Not that we have to, you know, proclaim this in our tradition a huge amount, but just to, rem to remind ourselves that women were a very important part of the leadership and ministry of the early church. Um, so that's just a reminder that that's the case. Um, rejoice again, uh, I said, and, uh, again, I say rejoice. Um, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, by in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your, your request be made to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. This is some really quotable stuff. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Implied there is don't think about all the other things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. The God of peace be with you. Wonderful, wonderful words from Paul. Now, then we have from John, um, this is Jesus' continued prayers for his disciples. This is the end of the farewell discourse. He's, he says he's not asking on behalf of these disciples. No, he is asking on their behalf, not on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. He prays for God's guidance. He prays for God's protection. Because he knows that he's leaving. So Jesus prays for his disciples who will be remaining behind him. And this prayer extends to us. So now let us pray together during this time of Lent. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We praise you, God, our creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially we thank you for the ministry of all the baptized. Those who provide for public safety and well-being.
those with whom we work or share common concerns. Opportunities to share good news with others. The treasure stored in every human life. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for your protection on us, Lord God. For the work that you have called us to this Lenten season. We dare to pray for others, God our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world, committing ourselves to care for others in his name. Especially we pray for the church in Asia and the Middle East. Those who seek to save the earth from destruction. Those who work for the benefit of others. Those who cannot work today. All who proclaim your saving love. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for the family and friends of Kathy, a former member who has been living in Virginia. For Bobby, my uncle, who's in medical rehab. For a friend of Beverly's who is, who is in ill health. For the family and friends of James, a 38-year-old son of Bruce and Donna, classmates of Bill's, who passed away. We ask for continued prayers for Jan Ann, who is recovering from pelvic a pelvic fracture. We pray for Patrick, a friend of mine, who asked for a prayer for his friend. For Tom, a friend of Bill's, who has pain in his bones and is suffering from depression. For David, another friend of Bill's who lost a good friend to violence. The family of Bonnie, Dennis's sister-in-law who passed away following open heart surgery. For Dolores, Ernie's sister who passed away. And the friends and family of Miss Jenko, Nick's mother. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for people all across the world. We pray for peace. God of love, as you have given your life to us, so may we live according to your holy will revealed in Jesus Christ. Make us bold to share your life and show your love in the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now may the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me uh, for more. I'm not sure if I will get to one tomorrow, to be honest. We'll see. Join us on Sunday for worship at 1030. And uh, we will also have a youth group starting this Sunday and confirmation class. So check those out as well. Um, if you want more information, we'll give it to you. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, check out our Facebook and Instagram accounts as we have a devotion for the Lenten season that is written by various staff. So join us for that. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition, and our readings came from the uh, New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.